Hey there, I'm Madeline, and today I will be giving you a speed review of Britt Ray's 2022 book, Generation Dread, Finding Purpose in an Age of Climate Crisis. There were definitely some highs and lows that are important to note, but before I get to that, I'll give you a quick rundown of Gen Dread. One of the structures in this book that I really appreciated was Ray's personal dictionary that's compiled throughout. These definitions are key to understanding what Ray expands on in each of the chapters, so I'll now give you a rundown of some of the terms that I found important or interesting. Psychoterratic, emotions related to perceived and felt states of the earth. Eco-anxiety, chronic fear of environmental doom. Ecological grief, the grief felt in relation to experienced or anticipated ecological losses. And these are just a few of the many terms Ray explores. Now you might be wondering, well, why do we need different words like eco-anxiety and ecological grief? Aren't they the same exact thing? Uh, similar, yes, but the same, no. Ray's aim is to provide a super specific set of terms to help people process their climate-related feelings. And although this can seem repetitive, specificity in language is important, especially when dealing with emotions. So now that some of the Generation Dread terms are laid out, let's dive into some of the key points in each part. Part 1. Part 1 is titled Feel It All, and aptly so. Early on in part one, Ray makes the case that when we turn towards tough feelings and have the support to process them, we unlock our capacity for strength and resolve to act. She notes that this idea applies to everyone living on the planet at this moment, or the generation dread referred to in the title. In this part, Ray also explores how many of us operate under a sort of climate denial and become immobilized and prone to inaction. Finally, Ray explores some of the eco-fascist-based rhetoric about overpopulation and more broadly discusses how the choice to have children is drastically altered in the face of a major crisis, and how there are a variety of views on the benefits and downsides of bringing children into a climate-damaged world. Overall, part one was the most dense part of the three, but it was quite enjoyable. So let's move on to part two. In part two, titled Connect Inward to Transform Oneself, Ray makes the case that internal activism is equally as important as external activism, and we must be able to process our climate-related emotions and fold them into our lives. One of my favorite aspects of part two was the differentiation between static and animating guilt, and Ray's point that healing can take place once we allow our guilt surrounding the climate crisis to be animating and spur action. Another one of my favorite points in this part was Ray's suggestion to reframe the environmental movement to not be one of sacrifice and denial, but rather one of abundance, gain, and creating community. Let's go ahead and move on to part three. Part three is titled, Connect Outward to Transform the World. And it begins with a really inspiring sentiment that is summed up perfectly by this quote. Thinking of what we're faced with as one big punctuated ending for our species doesn't only abandon the future, it forsakes the past. Ray essentially reassures readers that there are so many factors at play in the climate crisis, and it is necessary to have hope while also pursuing action. She also stresses that we must move away from the societal model of dominating others to a model of partnership. In other words, creating a cohesive community is crucial for change. Now, on to some pros and cons of the book overall. Ray started most chapters with a personal story, and it was a great hook. Ray found the sweet spot between emotion and fact, and I wasn't overwhelmed by either. Ray's conversational writing style kept me engaged throughout the whole book. There were some great discussion questions in this book, but unfortunately, they were hidden in the back. Finally, it felt like there was a lack of culmination in terms of actionable steps. I think if there were reflection prompts sprinkled throughout the book, the action steps would have felt more concrete. With all this being said, I would definitely still recommend Generation Dread as a read, but definitely check out the discussion questions beforehand and reference them throughout. I'm a big believer in spending time with our emotions, so this topic alone is really exciting, and it's great to see people like Ray exploring the importance of it. I hope you enjoyed this review of Generation Dread. This is Madeline signing off, and thanks for watching.